Bro, I'm so into the idea of digital minimalism right now. Yeah, this is too much. I want to just be able to sit down and just write. Oh, I get it. I get distracted. How does anybody do anything when they're in a browser and they're one click away from any piece of information you could ever want? This is too much to look at. It's literally irresistible. Yeah. What do other creatives do? This is my typewriter. Just listen to this. You can't write poetry on a computer. Why not? Well, because we're, I'm going for a rhythm. You don't just sit down at a computer. You sit down at a computer full of distractions. That sound, you'll get lost in it. This feels a little extreme. I don't know if I'm going to buy a real typewriter. You know how much work is typewriter maintenance? Yeah, I don't want to lug it around. It gets jammed if you type too fast. Do I need to buy a ribbon? Can you backspace? But I totally get the minimalism aspect. Just you and the typewriter. You're locked in. There's no distractions. You get the tactile flow. Do you think we could build a typewriter app? I made a typewriter app. I know it's another writing app. Just hear me out. Writing on a typewriter is a cool, fun experience. And I wanted to see if I could emulate that or at least get as close as I could on a MacBook. It would be super simple, no distractions, no pop-ups, no files to manage, no tags, something you could just sit down at and write. There is something special about writing with a typewriter though. I don't know what it is. It keeps you centered. I mean, your eyes literally stay in the center as you type and the page moves around. You get that feeling of progress as you see the page move and as you go down another line and the satisfying clicks just like lock you into flow. The big question though is could I achieve that experience, that feel of writing on a typewriter on a MacBook? Let's find out. So I started this project right after Claude 3.7 came out. That was kind of a turning point for me when, when LLM coding got very good. Vibe coding was kind of popping off. Felt like we were entering an era where I could actually maybe finish some side projects, which was fun. Now I still need to be hyper aggressive to stave off the version of myself that thinks, oh bro, you could totally build that whole complex app in a week, no worries. But I did feel compelled to try out the vibe coding experience, practice a little bit more of coding with LLMs first, and see if for this personal project, I could build something that I was personally proud of, a quality product that's not just AI slop. I am calling it vibe coding still. I do think the term vibe coding is a bit poisoned right now. I don't think it has to be though. I think people think vibe coding means you're just blindly accepting whatever the LLM gives you. But I think that if you are a conscientious curator of the responses it gives you. If you know when to say no and you're pretty ruthless and you slowly iterate over time, I think it can produce a lot of value. So I started this project and I'm looking at my chat history now. I did go straight to building like a minimal proof of concept for this typewriter idea. I knew it would be a little different where the page moves and the text stays in the center visually. Um, Basically every typing app on your computer uses a fixed text input where then the text moves as you type, but this would be one where the page moves, but the text visually has to stay in the center. It was kind of a tricky thing to do. I decided to go with Swift UI and build a Mac app. I think this needed to be on a MacBook, on a physical computer with a keyboard to feel like a typewriter. And I just kind of wanted to learn Swift UI. I hadn't actually built a full Swift UI app yet. So I was curious what that was like. I found pretty early on that ChatGPT is not very good at Swift UI. I don't know, maybe my app is just weird and because I'm doing the text input off offset thing, this is like so abnormal from what a normal app would do. It really had a hard time adjusting offsets and laying out the view to be correct. And I often found there were a lot of things that it suggested that were not even valid Swift UI. It actually did hallucinate a lot of bad code. And my theory is that Swift UI is so protected by Apple, there's so few good examples online of the newest current Swift UI version that LLMs actually aren't very good at this. And that's actually a pretty, it's not a great sign for Apple. I mean, it, this makes me not want to write Swift UI here. I would much rather stay in a land where LLMs are gonna actually help me and I can trust what they're giving me. This did not stop me from building the app, but I mean, what it did force me to do is actually learn Swift UI so I knew better how to write the right syntax. So I guess you could almost say it's a good thing that it wasn't perfect at it. Eventually though, after some iteration and some testing, I did have a view that was moving as I wanted it to, doing the typewriter thing, but now I need to make it look good. This app in particular, it's so minimal, it's the only thing you're gonna be looking at. I needed it to be visually appealing. Pinterest was a great first step, just collecting pictures of typewriters that I thought looked good. There's, I knew there's a lot of moving parts here and I wanted to get the animations right. So I watched a technology connections video on how a typewriter works. And then I watched it again 
and then I slowed it down and paused on certain points. That was a fantastic video. This was just to learn how the animation should work and which parts should move. And I mean, doing it in 3D, like 3D modeling a typewriter and then having all the pieces move and animate in 3D space, that would be so freaking cool, but that would take me far longer than I would be willing to spend on this project. So I tried to minimize it and create kind of a 2D or simple version of what are the bare minimal components that I would need to move here. I ended up taking some pictures that I liked from Pinterest and copying them into ChatGPT and saying, you know, create a simple rendering of a, I think, skeuomorphic typewriter. And then I kind of used that to then mimic the shading and the shapes and then draw that in Figma. I ended up drawing a bunch of essentially squares, essentially rounded rectangle squares with gradients to make it look like it has some depth. This was a little tedious, but it actually worked really well. And what it will set me up for is to change colors and swap out parts easily in the future if I need to. I got this simple pink in right now, which I think is a good base color. It looks good. I have plans to add more support for other colors and or other skins in the future, but scope creep set in and I, I just needed to, I needed to, I needed to ship, I needed to ship this. I needed to not spend forever on design. So this is what we got. I do think it's looking pretty good at this point. I think it's pretty fun to type with. I think it's very satisfying. It looks good, but there is one thing missing. It's those clickety clacks. You'll get lost in it. We gotta have the clickety clacks. To do this, I went to 11 labs and generated typewriter sound effects uh, with their AI cut them up maybe six or seven different variations of a of a keystroke and I play a random one when you hit a keystroke. I don't want it exactly the same every time you hit. I want it to be a little bit organic, have a little bit of feel. That ended up working out pretty well. It's pretty satisfying, right? Honestly, the typewriter experience was feeling pretty great, but this was like the last 20% of the project that ends up taking what feels like 80% of the time. So many little loose ends to tie up here where it's like, there definitely needs to be an autosave feature. If the page gets really long, how do we scroll? We probably need a bunch of keyboard shortcuts. I don't want to do a full Oh yeah, I need a landing page too. So quick tangent for the landing page, I tried out Vercel's V0. It was absolutely clutch in this scenario. I think V0 is really good for simple web pages like this. So I honestly, I, I did some chatting with ChatGPT to just nail the content first. I spent probably more time working on just like the content and the framing and the vision behind the project. Kind of just dumped that into V0, said, create me a landing page. I iterated just a couple times, but I had something pretty good pretty right away. Finally, we're finally ready to release the app after suppressing every fiber in my body telling me things like, bro, this app sucks. You need way more functionality. This is this is dumb. Well, just you should just scrap this and move on to your next project. Don't embarrass yourself. No, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make this exist first and then we'll make it good. Not to say that it isn't good, but it's it's simple. I wanted to go through the Apple App Store though to get the full the full Apple Swift UI experience. So hopefully Apple would will be chill on the Mac App Store. Who even cares about the Mac App Store? And they won't reject me immediately as I submit my- Rejected. Okay, fine, I had to fix that one bug, but hopefully this time- Rejected. All right, fine. I had to like show a toast when I created a new document. Apple was just weird about me showing that. But once I got that in, I think it took three different submissions. We got approved. We're on the Mac App Store. It's there for download right now. Go check it out. It's a free download right now. I may add more to it later but right now it's free, so go check it out. So, takeaways and learnings. Overall, I am really happy with this. This was a, actually a really cool vibe coding project where I was able to do way more than I could have done if I did not have these LLM tools to assist me. I would not have finished this app. Vibe coding is legit. I think I was very careful to make a thing that I'm proud of too. So I did not just blindly accept the prompts. Like I said, I had actual issues with a lot of Swift UI stuff. It wasn't doing what I wanted to, but I still was able to use these tools and get a lot of value from them. And and then I had to personally hand refine some of the bits that I had to hand refine. I think that's the key to vibe coding is, is a two way street. You are working with the LLM. You are not having the LLM just build the app for you. For the app itself, did this perfectly mimic the feel and the distraction free environment of a typewriter writing experience? That's pretty hard to do when you're actually on your MacBook. I do really like writing with this app when it's in full screen and I have to still have a little self-discipline to like not switch over back to a browser. But I do really like the clean writing environment. You have nothing else to focus on. You have no visual distractions in your space. I do think it is a pretty fun app to write with. There's always more I could do. I'm gonna continue to play with this, see what feels good, see what makes sense about adding new features and fixes. I would love for you to 
try it out and let me know what you think personally. But for now, I am on to the next project. Peace.